We're two hitchhikers. We met while hiking Mount Baldy with mutual friends, wasted no time, got engaged on a frozen alpine lake, got hitched, and have been adventuring together since. We're embarking on a new adventure of living big in a tiny home. Let's see how this goes. Adventure awaits. <laughs> Previously, we began manually trenching to try and run power lines from these solar panels to the tiny home location. We accidentally hit a water line. We had to patch it up, but with winter coming and no access to heavy machinery, we had to hit the brakes on the project. Well, now that spring is here, we were finally able to properly fix that irrigation line. And now that we have access to this excavator, we can finally finish what we set out to do months ago. We're going to do a straight shot from here to the solar panel. We have a rock reef. We're gonna dig through it as much as we can, but in regards of not damaging the machine, if anything gets too tough, we're just gonna bury the line. But what I need is for the line to be as straight as possible so that we can save as much line as possible. We only have 200 feet of two watt wire that has to go from that control box to the control box that we're putting right here. Last time I measured, we had 10 extra feet. That's not a lot of wiggle room. That's not a lot of wiggle room. So if I go, if it, I take the bend out of it, that's probably gonna give us three feet. And that's gonna give us an extra three feet of wiggle room because we, 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 just, we just can't afford that. So hopefully no mistakes. We actually have about 10 feet here. How much do we have? About 10 feet. You can't hear me because you've got your headphones on. Warren. If you recall previously, we had tried to hand trench this earlier. Well, this was actually last year and then winter came and we weren't able to do it anymore. But we were trying to do it with the jackhammer, with the trencher, um, and we just needed bigger equipment because of how many rocks and the size of the rocks that we have. So we still have the availability to use this big beast here. So we're gonna try and trench from here to the solar panels that are currently set up and hopefully we can finally hook up the wiring for the battery system for the full solar power. While Reuben is excavating with the bucket, I'm going through to remove any remaining rubble and debris so there is no possibility of the pipe getting punctured once buried. These rocks just keep rolling back into the trench. I'm telling you, all my years of deadlifts and hanging around the squat racks was just prepping me for this. So we did a quick patch there and then we fixed it properly a few weeks ago. We had to cover it back up. So now as we're building the trench going towards the solar panels, he just has to be very careful. He knows where the line is, but we just have to be careful at this point. So he's going a little slower. All right, we got the trench completely dug and right there is where the water pipe is. So the entire trench is a little bit deeper than where that's at, including where I'm standing. So I'm gonna have to backfill this in a little bit as will Ruben where he's at and to get it to meet with a gradual slope to the rest of the trench. Good news is we did not damage that water line. Hmm. 
Now it's time to lay the pipe and run the power lines through it. These connections right here are the strings of solar panels. We have three strings, so one, two, three, optional four for the future. And this turns the solar panels off from connecting to the shed. Yeah, you've got maybe like five or six inches on the black. The red's already in. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm going to be running the ground wire into this and then the ground wire is going to go to the rod that I'm going to be shoving into here in the ground. As you can see, this would plug into here like that. These two strings, this top one and this bottom one are going to be the ones that do their tang. And you're going to connect those to the small battery? Yep, it's going to go like that. Bam! Huh? I can't believe we're here, like at this place, like it just seemed like we'd never get to this point and here you are about to actually make this connection. I know, but I got to run the wire from that, from the back end and connect it to here on this panel. So it's a little bit difficult to tell through the camera lens, I think, but right here is about two and a half feet down of just sheer rock. So this is what we were trying to manually trench out last year. And 200 feet of this made for a very difficult time. Which is why we were not able to finish trenching this entire 200 feet. So, so thankful to have this excavator because this would have taken us probably six months to do by hand and many, many bad days. And I don't know, maybe one of us would not have survived each other. It really is quite amazing that that which can take days or even weeks to dig up is only taking us a couple of hours to fill back in. never fails whenever we're doing any of this digging, lava rocks are coming up with anything that we haul up, right? So these lava rocks are filled with tons of divots and grooves and when they're covered with mud and the roots are stuck to them, here's one I can actually pick up, I can't help but think of the orcs from Lord of the Rings. Well, here is the exterior of our tiny home, and she hasn't really changed much except for the windows that we installed here. I cannot do this backwards. But when we first acquired this as just the shell of the shed, we knew that we had to put an exterior sealant on it to protect it from the elements. Now, we're a couple months past due. The weather is definitely getting warmer, and it is time to do so now. So... 
our thoughts are since we have to go ahead and prep the exterior, do the cleaning, do the sanding a little bit to put on that sealer, maybe, just maybe, we'll change the color. So what I did is I did some just quick Photoshop renderings of possibilities. Here are a few of the color options that we came up with. Now keep in mind, the roof is going to stay the aluminum color. We're not gonna make any adjustments to that. The first option is a cream color, sort of looks very traditional. The second option is a light gray color, more of a pewter color. A third option is this sage color. And another option we're considering is more of a contemporary, possibly moody option of this charcoal color. Another thing to consider is this shed that we built. So the siding that we have, it's what was available at the time. We did not have the ability to wait for other color siding to come in. So our aesthetic between the two units, it's not quite consistent. And considering that, you know, whether we leave it the same or paint it different colors or have them complement. We're just curious what your thoughts are. Let us know what you think. This week felt like the first week in a very long time where we were able to accomplish what we had planned, as loosely as possible anyway. We've learned that no matter how we plan or how much I'd like to check things off in order on a spreadsheet, it just doesn't work out that way. It's a perfect metaphor for life. We've got two sets of hands between us and we do all that we can, the best that we can, considering what unfolds before us. We got the trench properly dug and the power line run to the solar array. If all goes as we envision it, this next week will consist of connecting it to the house, but we won't be holding our breath on that one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.